So, uh, my, my name is Paul Rosalli, I'm with the Borough of the Land Trust. Uh, I, I have a, a brief presentation to ask some questions. This might be a, a way to uh, put some other questions in, in, in the mind of some of the experts. But, but before I begin, I want to uh, applaud uh, uh, Attorney McElroy, uh, Attorney uh, Oleg, and, and all the experts I've seen and heard both of you uh, from nearly over a year ago at the EFSB hearings. Uh, your, your wisdom and your forcefulness are well appreciated even way back then. Uh, you certainly had the interest of, of the town in mind and I can, I can attest to that because I've been at most of the EFSB hearings and most of the meetings that I've seen both of you work, so thank you for all that you do. I also want to thank the, uh, the town council for, for uh, this opportunity to speak with you this evening. And, and I know many of us here, uh, including myself, uh, are against the power plant. Um, I'll be speaking on behalf of the, the Borough of the Land Trust tonight. Uh, it's important to recognize that the Borough of the Land Trust owns properties immediately adjacent to not only the power plant, but many of the uh, uh, associated segments of the project itself. And that's what I'll be speaking on. I'm going to be extremely selfish tonight, and, and I hope you don't mind me being selfish tonight, but I want to talk about the environmental consequences of, and, and how that could relate to some of the, some of the uh, uh, tax agreements before you this evening. I, I can say almost with, with, without a doubt that the environment has not only taken a back seat, mm -hmm. but has taken a, a distant, uh, it might as well be on a different planet mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how the environment is being uh, worked on or approached or litigated or even dealt with when it comes to the FSB hearings. And particularly the environment uh, immediately around the power plant. Uh, if we take a, a wide view of, of where we are, uh, we, we actually live in a, in a, in a great part of, of the world. Uh, there is a contiguous forest from uh, almost uh, near Canada, uh, Nova Scotia, all the way down to the Carolinas. Uh, a contiguous forest that has been there for, for a little over a hundred years. Uh, there are some breakups, obviously, and you can see those breakups there. The, the one big breakup uh, will be the Invenergy Project. And that's the, the concern of mine this evening and as part of this presentation. Uh, the Borough of the Land Trust don't, does own properties, and again, I apologize for being selfish, but, but I want this to be at least, at the very least, recognized and somehow worked into the tax agreement, because it's not. None of the environment issues are, in my mind, seem to be worked into any tax agreement, agreement before the town council tonight. This is the, uh, the picture that, that you probably have seen before. Uh, that blue circle is where the project site is. Uh, the Barlville Land Trust properties are in uh, dark red and in yellow uh, right across the street. Pretty much uh, there's a Clear River property up near Wallam Lake, which is the, the, the top of the, the, the picture. Uh, we own a property on South Shore Road. Uh, Scott Cummings from the Nature Conservancy will talk about this area as being a choke point, a choke point between migration patterns and, and travel routes for wildlife from Maine all the way down to Connecticut and beyond. Where the Energy Project is, that blue dot right above there, is the choke point where all this ends up. It's important to know that some of the projects, some of the associated projects, are next to some of the land trust properties as well. Particularly the 6.8 mile uh, power line extension, which, is, which now we've magically, the land trust owns property, that is now magically an abutter to the 6.8 mile power line extension, the new line that will go from the Invenergy power plant, uh, the Invenergy project, all the way to the Jackson substation uh, in uh, Massachusetts. 
it's important to recognize that that is the location of, this, of these properties. Often when we think of a property value, when it, when it comes to uh, 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 assessing properties, we're always thinking of, of houses, and real estate, whether and, and uh, uh, physical properties, houses and cars. We rarely think of just open space and land. And as part of this tax agreement, I would like, I have some questions at the end that I'd like to answer tonight to see how we can work those into those open space properties, particularly properties that are designated as open space, supported by taxpayer funds. By the way, vote, vote yes on six when it comes to this election. Uh, uh, you'll help support bond referendums, uh, hopefully for the Borough of the Land Trust as well. Um, I, can't, I can't even approach or even come close to uh, what Mr. McElroy did in terms of of coming up with numbers and, and his experience. But in my mind, when I do the, when I do the math, even for $182, it comes to about $1.56 per day per person. I, I don't have any issues with that. That's something you're gonna to have to deal with. But what I want to understand is, I, I, and I can't imagine that the tax agreement, I'm almost done by the way, I can't imagine that the tax agreement is or can be the ultimate solution for all the ills associated with the power plant. But I'd like to see what the tax agreement can do for this particular, these particular pieces of property. So the questions I have are as follows. How can we get the environment and the properties owned by the land trust and the tax agreement? We're going to be impacted. Most of those properties will be impacted some way or another through real estate uh, assessed values or the obvious upheaval it takes for people to move or who want to move. But the land stays there, the water still flows, the creatures still live, they are impacted by the, uh, uh, the pollution that comes out of and as Mr. McElroy, Attorney McElroy says, it's a polluting monster. So with that in mind, where does the line, how, where is the line drawn? What value can we put on the local and regional environment and make it part of the intact, make it part of the tax agreement? It's not just properties owned by the Borough of the Land Trust. There are properties owned by other, other organizations and nonprofits as well. We are not in that list of 157 abutters. And finally, the Infinity Project will impact property immediately adjacent to the power plant. Construction of the 6.8 mile power line will impact property as well, for example. How can we put all the properties adjacent to all the segments of the project on the property, property value proposal? And I forget the acronym, but the PVGA. PVGA, thank you. And assess the impacts of these properties as part of the tax agreement. Oh, by the way, as a plug, uh, tomorrow evening, uh, I'm doing, uh, which is the 19th uh, Learn the Facts presentation at the Cumberland Library, Cumberland Monastery at 6.30. And I have a feeling we're going to have a very lively discussion over this tax agreement. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.